Hey everyone, my name is Marielle Woods. I am a director and alumni of Salute Your Shorts Film Festival. Very excited today to be chatting with Gary about his film Next Level Shit, which is a really fun title to say. Uh, I've had two films play at Salute Your Shorts, uh, a micro short called First World Problems and my uh, AFI directing workshop for women film, Spin. Um, so hi, it's so good to meet you virtually, which is the only way we get to meet each other these days. That's at the times. Uh, hi, Marielle, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me the chance to watch your film. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Um, I am very curious to know uh, how and why this idea came to you. That's always the question. Always <laughs> the question. Um, well, I, I, could, it potent, could it possibly be a little bit autobiographical, perhaps? I will explain everything. Um, but first, I want to say it's so nice to be back at Salute Your Shorts, even virtually. Um, my first short film, Sunset, played in Salute Your Shorts back in 2018. So it's just nice uh, to be here, even if it's virtual. Um, so next level shit, and this conversation is going to involve some spoilers. So if you Excellent. haven't watched it, you know, pause, come back. Um, next level shit. Uh, is about a gay perfectionist who in his desire to have the perfect third date with Mr. Right and wants to be totally clean everywhere, uh, prepares obsessively, but his obsessive preparations backfire, sending the relationship spiraling to a whole new level of intimacy. Is, is backfire a pun? It's all puns. It's puns, <laughs> puns all the way down. Um, so, so the, the shitting the, of the title, which is the backfiring, um, is partially inspired by real events, um, not sexy events. What happened was when I first moved to New York back in fall of 2013, I was coming back to Manhattan from uh, Brooklyn. I was then on my aunt's couch and I had eaten a burger in Brooklyn that just like didn't sit. Yep. <laughs> and, you know, this thing is like rising inside and I'm like yep, yep, sweating yep, yep, yep. and trying to get, and like, I just barely miss. Like I get to the bathroom, but not to the toilet. Oh God. And so I have shat myself. I'm like sitting there on the toilet. I'm feeling so vulnerable. Oh. My aunt is like, are you okay? And I'm like, after a minute. It's basically like the, the way. Sure. That but, but you know, sitting there in my vulnerability, I thought like, wow. This is a really interesting space. I should make a queer short film about this. Yes, I'm all about queer short films, so. Oh, absolutely. Um, and and I, I, like, I connected that kind of vulnerability of like, you know, shitting oneself with yeah. a lot of the vulnerability that, I, that I've noticed for myself and for other people, really anyone who, you know, has sex with a butt involved, but, but sure. emphatically for gay men who do receptive anal sex, about like how much we try to hide the fact that like yes. it's butt and there's shit there. Yes. And, and as I like to say about this movie, love comes from the shit, not Ugh. in spite of it. Totally. <laughs> um, I mean, I really like, I was thrilled to watch this film. I'm a big fan of anything that like normalizes talk about sex and talk about bodies. I mean, sex is such an intimate thing, you know, whether or not you're, you're queer or, or you identify as hetero or, um, you know, you're a you identify male or female. It's, I, so often I find that we're always trying to like hide the messy things, but if you're going to have sex with someone, I mean, it's, it's intimate, you know, you, you're up in each other's bodies. You are quite literally in each other's junk. You know. So, like, I just want to say thank you for making a film that I think does, although it is about, you know, the self-consciousness, it's ultimately, for me, felt very, like, normalizing of talking about these kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, uh, one thing that I've heard is that gay men and straight women, or just women, period, like, really are like, I get this movie. And then straight men have two responses. The one, they're like, educational. And two, there's like, oh, I don't get it. Mo it's mostly educational. And I think there's something particularly about like anyone mm. who like receives sex into the body and it's not just a penetrative mm. thing. And like the body is a, is a liquidy, you know, <laughs> what kinds of subs, you know, what is it? Yeah. It's messy, like to enter the body, to have that. Yes. Anyone involving any kind of real orifice. I mean, that really makes me think about um, whether or not the festival is 
going to use this part of the conversation. But since we're talking about it and I'm interested, I'm going there. Um, it really makes me think about also the taboos we have around like being a straight man <clears throat> and allowing uh, anal play. Mm-hmm. Like there is something about this idea of, of the penetrated versus the penetrator um, and the power dynamics there. Uh, which is very interesting that I hadn't actually thought about it until you just started saying that. That is, that we is did, unfortunately not shocking, but it is fascinating. We did interview a DP uh, who we liked a lot. We didn't actually end up going with him, but when we were sitting down to dinner with him, he talked about like, and you know, my girlfriend and I do anal play, so so I actually really get. This. I get it. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Look, we should, you know, to each their own, and everyone play with however you want to play, because. I say fucking there, be fucked. Like, God. I agree. There is no right way. There is absolutely no right way. I have various projects that, that assess the, um, particularly queer male community, the way that we assign tops, bottoms, and sort of like heteronormative yeah. ourselves. Like, I'm not here to yuck anyone's yum, but I am here to like thoughtfully critique why we feel sure. we, like put into piles. Um, sure. But that's, that's, those are different. Um, those are different uh, uh, projects. Although it's worth saying that um, one little thing that I like in Next Level Shit is that when we finally meet the date, who we've only heard over the phone and his voice is so like straight yes. and all that, like he, it's this beautiful Asian American actor, Daniel K. Isaac, who- Yes, who I know from Billions. Is, right, <laughs> who is extremely kind and extremely talented and extremely sexy. Um, but, very, very sexy. <laughs> Uh, but we in you know, the queer male community like have stereotypes that we apply to ethnicity. So it was important yes. that the person who opened the door not be exactly the person you think this like, you know, mask top that totally. Ben Bauer has been fantasizing about this whole Did time. you write it with that intention? Um, no, but when we kind of realized that he was an option, it was like, yeah, point to that. Yeah. Um, just generally speaking, I like, I try to subvert tropes when I can, even if it's not the main point of the movie. It's just like, how can we, how can we dispel mass media notions about like how body type or race sure. or, or age or whatever, like informs sexual politics. Sure, totally. I'm all about that. Yeah. And what are you, um, what are you working on now? You mentioned some other projects. Oh my goodness. This is going to be a total about face from Whoa. The, um, so my, my big project right now is, is a love letter to my uncle who died of AIDS when I was three um, called Last Summer with Ira. And it imagines what it would have been like if I had gotten to know him, if I was maybe 16 when he died yeah. in 1991 instead of three. And in the summer that this kid is coming out to himself, that's the summer that his uncle comes home from the West Village to Westchester to die. And it's the only wow. the one summer they have to build an authentic relationship before time runs out. So yeah. very different from Next Level Shit. Wow, wow, um, wow. So that we're hoping to, that's a feature. We have a short proof of concept that's starting to hit the circuit, but- um, oh. oh, you've already shot it. So yeah, we have the proof of concept that we've shot. Cool. Um, and then we have the feature, which we are hoping to shoot next summer, COVID, cool. and et cetera, dependent. So that's rolling forward. Um, but what's more in a sort of next level shit vein is, um, yeah. I have an, an adaptation of Jane Austen's Sense and Sensibility that I'm working on called Naked with Books, um, oh. which is a sexy intellectual romp uh, where a, a br- I don't really have a good pitch for this yet, but it's a fine. brother and sister who are totally opposite, queer, both queer, um, through their romantic entanglements, find what like kind of brings them closer together. Um, cool. But but there's a lot of nudity and there's a lot. I of- love it. I love that title. That's a great title. Um, wow, you're working on a lot of stuff. That's so cool. Quarantine, um, man. <laughs> I know, right? What else are we doing? If it's I don't like, work, I'll go crazy. It's crazy. And and um, talk to me a little bit about um, casting for your film. You know, we we talked a little bit about um, Daniel from Billions, uh, Daniel K. Isaac. But talk to me about your lead and what you were looking for there. So with Ben, um, so this is, this is kind of cool. So the, the, the previous short that played at Salute Your Shorts, Sunset, also played at Rhode Island International Film Festival. And it played in the same block as Ben Bauer's short, um, Something New. And so we met in the shorts block and then we met again 
on a Providence rooftop later that night. And I had been stewing next level shit. And then was like the perfect gay oh. for this role. He calls himself the gay Meg Ryan. Like, oh. um, he, you know, he does rom-com and something new is something of a rom-com. Sure. Um, the the rom-coms I like are the ones that drive through a messy thing in order to get sure. to the like real vulnerable. Quite stuff. literally. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there, there are, there, uh, there are really good examples. And Meg Ryan, you know, her, her orgasm in a diner scene is a good mm -hmm. example of like the messy leading to the vulnerable. Yes. Um, so I thought Ben would be perfect for this. We had a very intimate conversation on that Providence rooftop about the very subject of the movie. And I pitched it to him, uh, sent him early scripts, and we worked back and forth uh, yeah. to get the script uh, where it is now. And what's actually really cool about that process is that the earliest drafts were super scatological. My natural disposition is to write drama. So I okay. thought that to write a comedy, I had to like really go over the top. And he right. said, hey, you pitched me an intimate, vulnerable movie that was like disguised as like a gross out comedy. Um, I'm getting the gross out comedy, but I want that intimate more. And I'm like, you mean write the movie that I know how to write more? I can do that. So, so I did that and, and we got that script really ready to go and, and, and shot um, well, back in 2018. So that's so great. It's it sort of been in like the DNA of it uh, since it started. Yeah, it's, uh, he's excellent. He's just so perfectly cast in this film. Uh, right down to the swoop of his hair that he uh, is fixing on his little walkover, which is perfect. Yeah, that like, the perfection, like, Ben Bauer. Yes. <laughs> <He's perfect. laughs> totally, totally. Um, what was, where did you guys shoot this? We shot it in Brooklyn and Queens in spring of 2018. So the two, the two, uh, Ben's, apartment and then um, the, the apartment where the party happens, uh, Edgar's apartment, are both in um, kind of southeastern Brooklyn, uh, not super far south. Uh, and then uh, we've shot uh, Chris's apartment, that's Daniel's, in, in Astoria. Cool. Um, so it's a three-day shoot, basically one day per apartment. Sure. Um, weirdly, the hardest like logistical day of the shoot was the main character's apartment, because even though there's only one line of dialogue, he looks at his stomach and says, shoot. Like, it was all these setups and all sure. these changes and like, okay, now he's making the eggs and that's egg one, egg two, egg three, egg four, egg five, crack one, egg, egg, you know, okay, now he's yeah. showering, now he's, you know, and it was like, God, they told me to write fucking montage, but yeah, I, hard. <laughs> I know that montage world. I think, you know, people who aren't actually in physical film production don't realize that montage is often is, that's the bulk of your day if you have one to shoot. It's just mm -hmm. not landing in a scene, but having to get so many camera setups and relights and all of that is just, that's, that's gnarly. Yeah, we barely made that day. And like, yeah. it wasn't a challenging emotional day. Sure, like, not sure. The acting day. <laughs> You're one sure. <laughs> but. Amazing. I mean, that egg did have to do a lot of acting, so. How um, many times did you guys cut that egg to get the... So we had five eggs and, and we had to like cook them, get the medium, get the close, get the crack. So we had them like labeled with letters and I shit you not, only one take actually was usable in the end of all of them through because there was something wrong with almost all of them. That uh, is incredible. But the other funny thing is we had, uh, Ben was like holding the plate on an angle so that when he cracks the egg, the yolk would- Brilliant. Would-, would Brilliant. Poop. It would poop, basically. <laughs> the egg would poop. A very deep metaphor. <laughs> yeah, it's a very, a very, really just erudite visual metaphor. <laughs> love it. I love it so much. And is this one a proof of concept for something longer? Or is this more of a standalone? Next, <laughs> next level shit. I, I do joke that I'll write the shitomatic universe, so that the next movie would be Edgar and Paul, whose party it was, and. I, it's going to be called Paul and Edgar's Wedding Night. And, you know, they have this like very pos sex positive worldview and with all their friends, but on their wedding night, because of like, uh, one of them has performance issues, the other has uh, anxiety, maybe there's like medication involved, like, they just can't get it up. And so now this is a big uh. crisis because like, they're supposed to be the sexiest, most positive thing. And what if they were lying Perfect. the whole time? Um, so Perfect. I don't actually have any plans. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. But it's, hey, you have an idea there, you know. 
And then uh, Dina and Jules, our, our resident lesbians. I, oh, I loved that scene. All of your, um, your <laughs> I, I don't even know what to call them, the supporting cast, I suppose, the is Greek excellent, chorus. perfectly cast. Um, you might get a kick out of this. Uh, I wanted the, the 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 lesbians to be the moral compass on anal sex, but I also was like, do lesbians do that? And so I googled <laughs> lesbians anal sex, and I found a YouTube channel where like queer women talk about having anal sex, and I was like, there is a sufficient number of queer. Yeah, women yeah. Look, I think I would, I would like to say that everyone is different, but I have found that there is no discrimination against like everyone. You know. It's it's all in play, so Fantastic. to speak. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, I will say that when uh, when Edgar says the lesbians have spoken uh, at our at our North American premiere in Toronto at Inside Out, people were like, "Yeah!" <laughs> Women's voices. Uh, of course, of course. <laughs> I I would probably have been one of those people. Um, and how did you find all those casts? Are those friends or were those they were actors? friends? Um, a lot of them came through. Uh, I used to work with an off-Broadway theater, uh, you know, off-off-Broadway theater company called The Amoralists, um, and we had this thing called Write Club, which we were putting up new plays, like, in sort of dangerously staged readings uh, ever so often, and so a lot of those actors I knew from Write Club. Um, uh, uh, the actress, one of the actresses playing um, one of the lesbians, uh, Jules, actually like is also a director and she directed the stage production that led to Sunset, my first short film, getting made. So she's wow. sort of like she she is like really important in my wow. no, really important in my like kind of self-development. Yes. Um, so it was really amazing to have her cool. um, on set. But yeah, it was just it was great. I called my friends and they were like, we're happy to do this. So. I love that. Well, it really is a successful short. I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, and congratulations on being in this awesome, awesome festival. Thank you so much, Mary Ellen. Thank you for the great and very, uh, uh, very penetrating questions. <laughs> You're very good at the puns and I am here for it. I mean, it's called Next Level Shit and it's about emotional, you know, relationship, next level shit, and literally about next level shit. Uh, I, well, I guess I'll conclude on saying in, um, uh, in this is another, I think, queer woman. Uh, the queer women have a thing for this movie, but I, I, I was at a screening in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. And as Ben's stomach is acting up after he's eaten the sushi, and the yes. sushi always gets a big reaction. People are like, don't do it! They yell at yeah. the screen. Um, this woman yelled out, next level shit <laughs> to the screen and so if i can have an audience screaming the title okay. at the screen that's a successful film <laughs> work here is done. that is a successful film excellent <laughs> uh cool well uh this has been awesome thanks so much for chatting with me and uh congrats again and enjoy salute your shorts everyone thank you All right.